Hello and welcome to this very quick tip. This quick tip is about these things here, propellers, specifically how you put them on the model. Uh, not about, you know, the fastings, but the direction. Now, the reason that I'm doing this is for a couple of people, for this gentleman who asked a question on a video, and also as a gentle reminder to all of you out there who maybe are lucky enough to not replace your props very often, that there is a right way to install the prop, and there is a wrong way as well. So shout out to my friend Ross, who jokes that it's a 50-50 chance that he's gonna get the prop on uh, the right way round from his stock of props. And actually it's not 50%, it's actually 25% because props can be clockwise or anti-clockwise, and they can also be installed front and back way. And you need a prop for the right direction of your motor, and you also need it pointing in the right direction. So this video is about that. If you understand all this, this is probably not the video for you, but if you are new to radio control, and you're just about to put the prop on your model and you're thinking, hang on a minute, which way does it go around? This hopefully will help. So the first job with any propeller is to look on it and there will usually be some kind of legend or writing. Sometimes it will be very simple and it will be the size of the prop, uh, usually denoted in inches. So a 60-30 will be a six inch prop with a three inch pitch. That's how aggressive the, uh, the angle on the blades is. That side with the writing on is the side that always needs to face in the direction of travel. So what does that mean? Well, on a multi-rotor, it means that you always install the prop with whatever numbers or legend or even company logos are pointing upwards so that the thrust is directed down. On a plane where you have it at the front, then again, you want the numbers facing in the direction of travel. So you're gonna want the numbers facing forward. But it can be a little bit complicated when you have something like a pusher prop on the back of the ZO HD drift. Which way do you install it then? Because normally you'd install it with the numbers facing away from the motor. But don't. It's exactly the same. You face the side of the prop that has the legends and the numbers on facing the direction of travel. So with that said, do remember that there are clockwise shortened to CW in the listings and counterclockwise versions. Now your motor is obviously going to spin in one specific direction. Uh, it could be either direction on uh, an airplane or a wing, but you need to make sure that the prop is the same direction as the motor. Now, if you find that you've bought the wrong prop and it's spinning in the wrong direction, then you can swap any two of the three wires that go from the ESC to the motor to sort that out. But I was always recommend just as you're taking the old broken prop off, compare it with the new one to make sure that you're putting one with the same direction on. If it's not, then you are going to have to resort to that trick with the wires or you can use advanced systems like BL Heli to reverse it. But for me, in something like a plane, they're normally with bullet connectors and it's a quick job to swap it over. If you install a prop backwards so that the letters are actually facing towards the rear of the airplane, uh, whether it's on the nose with something called a tractor motor setup, or whether it's on the back of the plane like we just looked at where it's a pusher setup, it will still produce a little bit of thrust, but it will be a very small amount when compared to installing the prop in the right way. So just because you can feel the air coming in the right direction off the back of the model doesn't necessarily mean it's in the right way round. The other giveaway is going to be the noise it makes. Uh, a prop that's installed backwards, i.e. with the numbers facing in the wrong direction, will also be an awful lot louder typically than one that's installed in the right direction. There should be a smooth noise, apologies for the impression, whereas if it's the wrong way around, it'll be an awful lot louder. It'll sound wrong. And if you ever spin a prop up and it sounds wrong, particularly if you just replaced it, stop and check that you've done it the right way around. And the last tip I'll give you is always balance your props. Now, with most modern props from decent manufacturers, they're not bad. Uh, this is a prop from one of my planes. 
and you can see the little bit of red tape in there. The bearings and your motor and the motor mount will thank you. And if you try and do FPV, it will help get rid of the vibration that can cause that kind of rolling jello shutter that you sometimes get in either your FPV camera or anything you're using to record HD. Uh, balancers don't have to be expensive. If you get a cheap and cheerful one though, and actually without a prop on it, rotate it and just make sure it does stop randomly and the balancer itself isn't out of balance. But hopefully that helps those of you that are new into the hobby. The trick is to always look and identify the top of the prop and that's going to have the legends on the writing. Uh, it might have the name of the prop, it might have the size, it might even like these little red ones have a direction of rotation and that is on the other side from where the air should be pushed back from. So you always want it facing forward on a plane, whether it's a pusher or a tractor setup, either on the nose or mounted dorsally. Or if in a quadcopter, you want those numbers. So when the quadcopter sat on the bench, you can read them all. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.